I was flying in the Air Defense Command in uh, Massachusetts, and we learned about the Vietnam War and they needed people. So I went to a personnel officer and I said, I want the next assignment that comes into Vietnam. And I got it. <laughs> in 1963, I was stationed at Nha Trang, Vietnam. We were an experimental unit, one of McNamara's dreams. We had about 10 airplanes and maybe 12 pilots. At that time, of course, we were basically embedded with the Vietnamese and advising them. In my case, I was teaching Vietnamese pilots. They weren't pilots yet. I was teaching them to be pilots. The first tour, I was there for one year, and then I came back to the U.S. in the summer of 1964. I went back in 72, 73, and 74 flying F-4s, Phantoms. And this time I was stationed at Udorn Air Base in Thailand, Northern Thailand, and flying all over Southeast Asia. Near the end, uh, I was the operations officer, and that was a little more exciting because we had flights that started about 4 a.m., and the last plane would land maybe 9, 10 at night. We were flying pretty much that schedule. As the ops officer, I was in charge of all the flying, of course, and <clears throat> during one period, we were flying 22 combat missions a day with a total of 17 crews. And that was tough, because they're long missions. Anyway, this one day I had flown in the morning and I was back at my desk and we got a call in for a very quick sortie to the Delta of Vietnam. Coming back, I flew across Cambodia and being so familiar with it, I saw a whole bunch of trucks coming down Route 13. And I said, that's very interesting. So I dropped down and took some pictures while well, they tried to shoot us up pretty well. But I got the pictures, took them back, and uh, they developed them, and all hell broke loose. Uh, first of all, they're going to court-martial me because I wasn't supposed to be in Cambodia doing anything. <laughs> they had already put that off limits. And then they realized what the pictures I had taken were hundreds and hundreds of Vietnamese trucks, North Vietnamese trucks. So pretty soon the four-star flew in, <laughs> And I was briefing him on what I saw with the pictures on the wing of his airplane, his, teeth, his transport business jet. He immediately took them, flew to Phnom Penh, and the Cambodians got all excited. Meanwhile, other Air Force assets were tasked to find these trucks and couldn't find them for two days. And I said, let me go back. I know where I saw them. I, you know, they, they only have so plenty places to go. Well, for two days, they wouldn't let me go back. Third day, I went back, found just the corner of a truck sticking out from under a tree, took it back, and the Cambodians actually went out in their T-28s and bombed it. This huge mass of trucks were hidden in a Michelin rubber plantation. And when the Cambodian Air Force bombed it, the whole plantation blew up. I think about war in general, it is not taught to our people, our school kids and anybody nearly enough because these are the most traumatic things that happen to any nation. And when only 10% or less of the people who live in a country actually have ever had a touch of the war, I mean, even their family members and so on and so forth, like our Congress, you can't ignore it. We'd like to, but you can't ignore it. And, and you've got to build that into your psyche and your planning. If you do that, we won't have so many wars.